Semen is a combination of glandular secretions and sperm. There are three different types of glands that secrete substances which become part of the semen. Before looking at those glands, let's do a review. The sperm are produced within the seminiferous tubules of the testes. This white structure represents a testis. After production, the sperm move into the epididymis where they are stored until ejaculation. During ejaculation, the sperm move out of the tail of the epididymis and go into the vas deferens or ductus deferens. The distal portion of the ductus deferens is the ampulla. It's enlarged here. From there, the sperm will empty into an ejaculatory duct. While this is occurring, the seminal glands, which are about the shape and size of a small finger, release their secretions into the ejaculatory duct. Seminal secretions make up between 60 to 70 percent of the total volume of the semen. The secretion is a yellowish color and slightly alkaline. It contains fructose, which will be used to synthesize ATP, vitamin C, which seems to be related to fertility, and prostaglandins. The prostaglandins will be involved in fertilization and the motility of the sperm. The semen then moves into the prostatic urethra, which goes through the center of the single prostate. The prostate in a young man is about the size of a walnut. Secretions from the prostate make up about 30% of the semen. This secretion is milky white. It used to be thought that these secretions were slightly acidic based on studies in dogs. However, recent data seems to indicate that the secretions are slightly alkaline. This makes sense because sperm have optimal mobility at a pH of between 6 to 6.5, and the female vagina has a pH of 3.5 to 4. That pH has to be buffered and raised to be closer to the 6 or the 6.5 for the sperm to be able to swim. Prostatic secretions contain the nutrient citrate, also clotting enzymes. These clotting enzymes are used to produce a fibrin protein. The fibrin protein makes the semen sticky so that it binds to the vaginal wall and the cervix, preventing the semen from being washed away. PSA, or prostate-specific antigen, is another component of the prostatic secretion. This chemical is involved in breaking down the fibrin protein, liquefying the semen so that the sperm can swim. This occurs about 20 to 30 minutes after the semen enters the vagina. The last type of glands are the paired bulbal urethral glands. They are about the size of a pea and are located here. These paired glands release a clear mucus that will be used for lubrication and also to clean out the urethra and buffer the acidity. There are several imbalances associated with the prostate gland. The first one is prostatitis. Anytime you see the suffix itis, that means inflammation. This is inflammation of the prostate gland, usually associated with a bacterial infection, such as Escherichia coli. A second imbalance is benign prostatic hyperplasia. 
The term hyperplasia means enlargement. This is an enlarged prostate. About 90% of men over the age of 70 experience prostatic hyperplasia. Individuals with benign prostatic hyperplasia have elevated levels of DHT or dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone is converted into DHT. During fetal development, DHT is involved in the development of the penis and the prostate gland. Male pattern baldness is triggered by DHT. The medication used to treat hyperplasia is finasteride. It inhibits the conversion of testosterone into DHT. Finasteride is also used to treat male pattern baldness. A third imbalance is prostate cancer. One out of six males experiences prostate cancer. Semen is a mixture of sperm and the secretions from the accessory glands. As mentioned before, it is slightly alkaline to buffer the acidic vagina. An ejaculation will consist of between two to five mils of semen. In each mil of semen, you will have between 50 million to 200 million sperm. Let's review the pathway for sperm during ejaculation. The bulbourethral glands will release their mucus during ejaculation, which will enter into the penile or spongy urethra, cleaning the urethra out and buffering the acidity. The sperm stored in the epididymis during ejaculation will move into the ductus deferens. The distal portion of the ductus deferens is the ampulla, and from there the sperm will enter the ejaculatory duct. As the sperm enter the ejaculatory duct, secretions from the seminal glands will also enter the ejaculatory duct. This combined secretion then will go into the prostatic urethra. That's the section of the urethra that goes through the prostate. This is the single prostate, which lies inferior to the urinary bladder, located here. Prostatic secretions will also enter the prostatic urethra, and the semen then will move into the membraneous or intermediate urethra, located here. The next portion of the urethra will be the penile or spongy urethra. The semen will move through the penile urethra as it exits the body. In this cadaver, we can see the testis, the epididymis, the ductus deferens. This area here is the spermatic cord. Within the spermatic cord, you have the testicular artery and the pampiniform plexus, as well as nerves, and the vas deferens. Vasectomy is a procedure that results in permanent sterility within the male. During a vasectomy, an incision is made into the scrotum. The ductus deferens is tied off and then cut. What the vasectomy does is it prevents the movement of the sperm from the epididymis to the rest of the duct system. However, you will still have the secretion from the glands. This individual will still ejaculate, but the semen will not have any sperm in it. 